storyteller this evening is Marjorie Knight. She is a single mother of two daughters. She is a social worker and a fervent advocate for social justice issues, especially those around poverty and women's issues. She was also Feminine Harbor's Light Stories MC this past winter. She is passionate about mentoring girls and women and believes that this is what is required to make changes in the way women see themselves. She comes from generations of strong Jamaican women who have shown that it is possible to nurture and support their loved ones while pursuing careers in every level of the workplace. She continues the Jamaican tradition of telling a story about life, the lessons learned, and our place within this life. Please welcome Marjorie. Good evening, everyone. You know, thinking about this topic of sexuality gave me a moment of pause. What did this topic mean? How would I approach it? What could I say? As I thought about it, I realized that it is an integral part of us, of me. It is part of what makes me me, special as that is. <laughs> My kids like to tell me, yes. <laughs> I grew up in Jamaica. I have three sisters and a brother and parents who were very involved with us. My mom was a high-powered executive and my father supported her in every way possible. He always said to her, if you don't like it, you don't like what's going on, pick up your handbag and come home. I can support my wife. My mother's friends were also high-powered executives, all married with children, great, great role models. I look back now and I can recognize how rare that was, especially for the time period. I was told I could do anything I wanted to do. I could be anything, any profession I wanted. It was all up to me. I was just to be the best that I could be. Sex and sexuality was something reserved for marriage. That was the way it was in my family. There are many versions of that story out there, but that's how I looked at it. I had boyfriends, but it was up to me how far things went. And in comparison to many, I did not go very far at all. <laughs> Until it was stolen from me. As a young adult, I met a man who was not willing to let me set the tone of this new relationship and arranged to put me in a position where he could take advantage of me. I was so ashamed. I told no one. It changed me though. I wavered between retreat and risky behavior because my self-worth was damaged. My sense of self changed. Life went on and I began to work with women in Africa. Mostly young women and AIDS, women, AIDS widows in the country of Kenya. I grieved with women who had almost no control over their lives. They were almost sold into marriage. The bride price often was depended upon to sustain entire families. The girls had no choice. I met a young lady who I shall call Mary. She was 16. She was being married off to an elderly man who had full-blown AIDS. This is a life sentence for her. Her parents only cared about the money they would receive, the animals they would receive, the bride price. So we appealed to the man to release her, or at the very least, agree to use condoms with this young girl. He, however, felt it was his right to have relations with her as she would be his wife. And it was his right to have children with her. She had no rights, 
and no control over her own body. Her sense of self and self-worth were damaged. I read the news and talk to young women here in Canada. How many have been coerced into flashing their boobs or Snapchat a photo of themselves topless or worse, naked? What happens when this is shared on social media amongst their peers and others? What happens to their sense of self and their self-worth then? We have sadly seen the repercussions of this in our news time and time again. What does this mean then? This is not unique to any particular society or country. It is universal, as you can see. It means that as women, we need to talk about this topic. As uncomfortable as it can be, we need to talk. We need to celebrate our sexuality, our motherhood, our beauty, our, our originality. It's all a part of us. We cannot lock away one part of us. We need it to be whole and become the person we were meant to be. It took me a long, long time to understand myself. That I was hiding. That I hid behind masks and lots of food because then I felt I could become invisible. But it took a long time to understand that I was not living life to my fullest potential because I was afraid and uncomfortable with my own self and my own body. I woke up, looked at the examples that I just spoke about and decided no more, no more. No more. I am worthy. I'm a wonderful person, despite what my children say. <laughs> I can be sexy and express it in any way I am comfortable with. It's my right to be whole. I control my mind and my body and my spirit. They are what makes me, me. I cannot cut off one part of me. How could I? How could you? So, talk to your daughters. Talk to your friends. Talk to your mom, the girl on the street, the girl at school. Encourage them to express and celebrate their womanhood. Because if we don't, who will? We are beautiful an original made by our creator to bring life and love into the world. Share this love with yourself. I am beautiful. I am loved. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. Can you say that with me? I am beautiful. I am loved. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. And you know what, at the end of the day, Damn it, I am a sexy mama. <laughs> Thank you.